All right, welcome everyone back to Eventually Podcast. Today we have a special guest. He's back with us again, Keith Enix. Uh, Keith, C- uh, CEO of Fanit, right? CEO is your title. Yeah. Yep. And you're going to talk to us today about the four signals of SEO that people should uh, should put on their website, specifically ta- tailored to many of our clients' IT service companies. So uh, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Glad to be back and looking forward to helping out IT companies maybe get some wins on their website, you know, with some practical application. Um, but before we get to practical application, I, I'm going to be talking about uh, the concepts at first. So there's going to be some real stuff to be able to apply on your site from this podcast. So this will be good. Awesome, man. Yeah. A lot of our clients, I know they have, uh, they, they, they have either websites that are, that, I, I, sometimes I see their older websites, they need to be updated or some of them have actually done a really good job on it, but maybe they haven't done as good a job as, on uh, the SEO side as they could. Yeah, you know, and one of the most common things um, that I see, which, which is really evidence of you get what you pay for, it, are IT companies who use uh, services that sort of uh, give them a website and content and all this stuff in one package and it's really cheap. We're talking, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a month. And um, the content ends up. I go in, do an analysis on the content. It's always syndicated content, which means that they're syndicating uh, content across many IT company websites, which throws a ton of issues up for duplicate content, um, content that is uh, cannibalizing their main. Uh, pages that they're trying to rank on their website, just a plethora of issues. And so um, I really want to address that and help IT companies understand that that's, that's really not the best tactic um, when you think about SEO uh, to, to put syndicated content on your site. Now, I think part of the pitch on that is um, to have content on your website makes you look bigger and you can share that content with your, um, with your customers or with people who you're trying to Uh, market to but really that's not content that's an overflow of your heart and so it's not really real it's not really true and it's probably not going to connect with your target market nearly as well as if you just uh, did your own work from your heart and your own um, research and such so uh, anyway that's that's one area that I definitely hope that by the end of this podcast um, if if IT companies out there are using that kind of a solution for their site or have syndicated content um, that they would really think twice about that and consider maybe removing that and, um, and and writing their own content. So on that, when you say syndicated content, that's I got the gist of it. Sounds like that's like maybe yeah. blog posts or or other sorts of content that that's just a, a basic stuff out out in the industry that that maybe a website provider or whatever service they're purchasing it from is just copying and pasting to all their customers, yeah. and, and they're not really putting any any unique aspects into it. Yeah, it might be a, a unique title uh, for um, uh, in general, but it's not unique for that specific website. So um, really what happens is Google, they came out with an update, uh, really started in 2010 called the Panda update. Um, and it's just progressed. There's been multiple iterations of Panda over the years and it's just gotten better and better. And uh, what it does is it it just devalues websites that don't provide unique quality content. Um, Obviously, there's a a lot of content out there that's not unique. Like uh, a lot of articles out there that have been written on the same exact topic, right? But when you take your own experience and you take your own research um, and you take that topic and you write something unique, Google notices that and it affects people differently. It causes people to act differently, which has to do with the popularity signal we're going to talk about today. Um, And that causes uh, Google to see your website as more relevant, which is another signal we're going to talk about today, to users. And so your website will rank much higher. Whereas if you have duplicate content, um, you're not going to rank for that. Google will say, well, you're not providing anything of value really to searchers. So... Um, not only will you not rank for that blog, but Google will actually devalue your entire website. So even unique pages on your website will not rank as well if you have duplicate content on your blog. Uh, It's because it reduces your popularity signal 
uh, for the keyword themes that you're trying to rank for. So it's really important that you provide value to your target market. Good to know. Yeah, it yeah. sounds, that makes sense. A more unique website that's tailored towards your company is going to grab the attention of a search engine more than, than just copy, yeah. copy paste. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and it's, it's more than copy paste. I mean, some of these, these companies are serving 200, 500, 1000 MSPs. It, yeah. It's just an automated dump yeah. and has the same headline, has the same content. And the MSPs like to do it because it saves them time and they have no time. And yeah. it's, like you said, yeah, which is um, which is fine, but when you when you think about uh, the amount of money and time they're investing, and in, say um, even five, let's just say it's five hundred bucks. If they just took that five hundred bucks and had one or two pieces of unique content written for them, they'd be so much further ahead after two or three or four or five years of doing that than they would with using something like. Um, something we just discussed where there's where it's just duplicate content across a bunch of websites. Um, Google would rank them much higher. They'd be, they'd be getting top of the funnel traffic, um, awareness phase type traffic. Uh, they'd be getting better bottom of the funnel traffic uh, in their local area on their service pages because Google would see them as more relevant than their competitors. So uh, when we look at Google, Google ranks by relevancy. They're looking to see who's the most relevant person in a local area and a national presence as well. So companies that do a really good job of providing unique content and um, content that Google knows people like um, in that content theme that your website is about, say it's IT companies, Google knows all the specific types of articles that uh, people love the most for that niche. And if you don't have those topics on your website with a unique spin on them, then uh, Google's not going to rank you well. So. So is it, so is that one of the secrets? Oh yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, so uh, there's, there's really a methodology that uh, an acronym that I, that I like to talk about uh, called trap. Uh, TRAP is uh, just an easy thing to remember, acronym. Um, the first T is for technical, R is for relevancy, A is for authority, and P is for popularity. And those are the four signals of SEO that we uh, use to help our clients uh, rank a lot better. And so utilizing those signals uh, to the benefit of your website, it takes a little bit of a knowledge on some typical pitfalls and common problems that we run into on client sites. And then uh, some pretty simple application. I've got six steps that um, IT companies can take to audit their website and to kind of um, start all over again and make sure they're going through the proper process for how um, they are ranking their site. You know, one, one um, I was doing a podcast with Cyrus Shepard. He's a very well recognized um, SEO uh, he just so happens to be in the Seattle area. But, um, you know, one of the things Cyrus Shepard said on that podcast as we were talking about SEO that I 100% agree with is, you know, it's better to have one frequently asked questions page that's very well done than 100 blogs that are duplicate or 1,000 blogs that are duplicate. Um, you can get a lot of really solid rankings from a frequently asked questions page if you've, if you've done it well, if you've done proper keyword research. And then use that frequently asked questions page as um, research for going deeper into other blogs that uh, provide unique value to your target market. So um, there's a there's a lot of simple things that can be done to get big results um, instead of thinking you have to do huge uh, amounts of uh, content uh, that that produce very little results, uh, which is how most people look at blogging. Even uh, not just content. A, a, a syndication and duplication of content, but even just um, writing credit content. You, people might think, oh, I'm writing unique content. You know, I'm, I'm uh, doing some basic keyword research. I'm writing the content, but uh, they haven't really thought about it from uh, the standpoint of what Google likes, and they haven't done the proper research for that. Uh, so they, they end up not really writing that great of content. So there's a whole process that Fanit uses to make sure that our clients are uh, not just getting content, but they're getting content that's well written to uh, steal relevancy from their competitors. And uh, you could also call it relevancy stacking. 
so that each post that goes out has a chance to rank. Um, and we don't, we don't write on topics that don't rank. That doesn't even make any sense. If, if you're putting content on your website, um, you might hear some people say, oh, you know, this piece of content's only for users. Well, that, that doesn't make sense. All the content on your website should be for users who are searching on Google. And if you've, um, if you've developed your SEO knowledge just a little bit more, you'd understand that there's always a keyword that you can go after to pull in some traffic to your website. Um, which will help you increase your relevancy signals on your site and stack against your competitors so you can dominate a lot better within the search engine results. So, um, you know, I'm this, you know, we're just kind of going back and forth, but um, I actually do have a, uh, I have a kind of PowerPoint presentation I'd like to just go through with you guys and you can ask questions as we go through it. Just to go through some of those common problems that I, I do see within each one of those signals. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a ton of questions, but let's, let's launch into your presentation. I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff in there. Maybe answer a bunch of my questions along the way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to put this up here and uh, you guys can see that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So um, I'll go ahead and present here, you know, just, uh, just, Looks Hopefully. good. What's that? It looks good. Okay. All right. You guys can all see it. Good. So this is the four signals of SEO your IT company must know to dominate the competition. We all love the word dominate. Yes. All right. All right. Um, so uh, the four major signals, I already talked about that, technical, relevancy, authority, and popularity. Let's talk about uh, what, what those mean. Technical, ask the question, can Google crawl my website? Can it? Can it get through that website, um, and is it fast? Uh, so that's a, that's a huge component there. A lot of websites are just too slow, and uh, basically, the slower your website, the longer it takes for Google to crawl your website. Uh, if it takes longer for Google to crawl it, it doesn't want to index more pages, which index has to do with the library, you know, the huge library that Google has. And they're trying to figure out where to put your website in that library, and where to put your pages in that library. Well, if your website's slow, uh, that doesn't help that process at all. So, um, you know, previous years, we've talked about three second load time speed. It's gotta be less than three seconds. Really, you gotta be, you gotta be closer to two. Gotta be two and less on your website. And what happens with website speed is just from doing normal website work, internet marketing, um, if you're using WordPress, installing plugins, uh, there's lots of things you can do to your website to slow it down. So um, you, you definitely want to make sure that you have uh, someone who's keeping tabs on how fast the website is and just staying up on optimizing it. And, uh, you know, that could be optimizing the images as well. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Oh, party foul. <laughs> No worries. So is this one of the signals? So, so yes. whether a search engine can crawl my website quickly, that, if they can, then that's a signal to them that, you know, I have a, at yeah. least a website worth looking at. You got it. You, yeah, you absolutely got it. And so, um, yeah, definitely it, it, you want, you want it to be fast. So closer to that, to that two second speed. Um, so fast is important, but if, if it's crawling your site and your site's fast and you have some of these other common issues, a 404 error is um, you changed a URL on your website and you didn't do a proper uh, 301 redirect to the new page. And so you have just a dead page sitting on your website that maybe has a link from one of your pages. Well, Google just, they, they'll hit that link They'll go to that dead page and then often it'll just stop crawling your website. And so basically it's a blocker. You don't want Google to stop crawling your site. You want it to crawl it and see fresh content often. That's a huge relevancy signal. And um, it, a sign that your website's not that healthy is if it's not really being crawled much. And a lot of these technical issues are, could, can just be removed, uh, which would just help Google crawl your website that much better. And then you can get all the main the, um, it's like having a fresh foundation, a proper setup. You know, I like golf and we were just talking about golf. Um, when you set up to the ball to golf, uh, if you're not set up correctly, oftentimes golfers, they'll think it's something wrong with their, um, their backswing, you know, 
impact position. Uh, but really what it could be most of the time is actually uh, the setup. Uh, if your feet are aligned and to your club face, to that target, and uh, your feet have got to be wide enough, you know, there's a lot of things that have to happen for proper setup for the golf swing. And you can remove a lot of potential issues in your golf swing if you just have a proper setup. Same thing with technical and SEO on your website. You just want to make sure that setup is good. So other issues, through internal 301 redirects. Um, what happens if you, uh, if you have a dead page and then you do a 301 redirect? Um, in that example I gave, maybe you forgot to change that link on that page. So it's still passing through a 301 redirect to the old URL, the old page that, where you just changed the URL on, and then it's passing over to the new URL, which that technically is correct. However, every time you have an internal link pass through a 301 redirect, you lose about 10% of your SEO power. And so the best thing to do would be to get rid of all internal 301 redirects and just have a link from um, a page go directly to the live URL of that other page. So you want to get rid of all those internal 301 redirects. So are you saying that if there's, uh, if people are reaching a 404 page by going to a certain URL, I should create a page that, that, uh, for that URL that then links to the proper page or That's a good question. yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. You know, what you want to do in that case is you want to redirect either to a new page that you've created. If you're going to create a new page or just do a 301 redirect to the most, uh, in, to the next most relevant page on your website. Uh, so in a lot of cases, if you're doing some big website changes, you're gonna probably do a lot of redirects to just a relevant page on your website. Most common place I see this is gonna be if you're writing new content on your website and optimizing it further, or you are changing your website. That's where we see a lot of 404 and 301 redirect work needing to happen. Uh, because often if you change your website, you're gonna change your URL structure across many pages on your site. So you need to have proper uh, 301 redirect set up. Yeah, I did that for when we rebranded to manage to win with, with the number two. Yes. So yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I'm curious real quick, uh, Keith, is there a way, how, like how do I test how fast my website loads? Is there, is there must be like a site or some tools that could, that could do that for me. I feel like we should do it for Fanit and manage to win right now. There we go. It'd be kind of fun. Well, if you'd like to go just check out some basic um, website testing tools, if you just go to Google and search, you know, website speed test, usually Pingdom is a pretty popular one that people use. Um, and I think it's tools.pingdom.com. Uh, that's a pretty popular one. So uh, that, I like that one. And you could use that. There's also some other ones out there as well. And they all kind of show a little bit different um, site speed. Uh, the one that you really need to be um, definitely keeping a big eye on is Google's PageSpeed uh, tool. So they actually have a PageSpeed tool. Just go ahead and search Google PageSpeed okay. and then run your website through that. And all the technical errors that you see on there, you just want to make sure you're keeping on top of, uh, working on fixing. Um, you know, you're going to have stuff come up here and there. You just want to be doing an audit every few months to make sure that that's clean just from a fast standpoint. Um, I'm pulling up the numbers for Fanit right now, Keith. There we go. I'll put you under the, uh, the under the in the hot seat right now. Okay. But it was streaming right now, so it must be a little bit slower. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it takes a while for it to do this. So I, it's at the Google one. I thought it would be quick. It's only at eighty yeah. percent. Yeah. All right. So you guys are. It says thirty four on the Google Page Speed Insights. Okay. There's so many numbers on here. I, I don't, we don't have to go into it, but I thought that was yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things you have to, I was going to just mention just for context sake. Um, so we are actually working through a lot of technical changes with Google, with Google and Fanit right now because we just changed our website. That's right. Yes. So, um, yeah. So we're working through a bunch of stuff with that. Um, but also you got to look at the website from two levels. One, there's a mobile version and there's also a desktop version that Google's looking at now. And the mobile version is becoming way more important. Um, so that causes a lot more issues for development because 
uh, you have to do a lot more development work to make your website fast within mobile because uh, Google just has a lot more stipulations that they're requesting now with webmasters. So, gotcha. uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, I think our website, I just did our website. So our, our website did worse than yours. So congratulations. You win. <laughs> yeah. Um, also when you make sure and uh, use those tools, go ahead and use the live URL of your website. So just go to Google, um, uh, and search your website and then wherever your website goes to probably the HTTPS version colon slash slash www dot or non www dot just use that and you'll get the best um, best view of how Google's actually um, seeing your website. So just a little tip on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, just for anybody who's listening, I'm at tools.pingdom.com and I'm using their their tool to analyze our websites yeah. right now. And then uh, I just typed in page it, I'm on Google page speed insights as well. And they, this is really cool. There's some good stuff. Your site fan it loaded in less than two seconds. And, uh, according to ping Dom, and I'm looking at manage to win right now. Oh, 2.63. Eh, we lose That's again. You know, you're under three, which is acceptable, but, uh, really, and we're, we're using Squarespace. So it's, it's their fault. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and, and actually, that's a good point. Uh, so you have two different systems. You have a closed system, which is um, you have Squarespace, and then you have a, a system that you can open source system like WordPress that you um, can make all the technical adjustments that you want to. So um, we just launched a new website, so we're in the process of technical adjustments to fan it to make it more uh, usable on a uh, desktop and a mobile version. Um, you uh, have no chance to change really anything with Squarespace. You can change images, you can change a little bit of the code, but you really don't have the server capabilities that you have with WordPress. So we always like our clients to get onto WordPress because that allows our dev team to have full capabilities to do all the optimizations to the desktop and mobile version that need to be done just to make sure things stay fast. So. Gotcha. That's good to know. Absolutely. Cool, man. All right. So another thing that I find are duplicate meta descriptions um, and internal redirect chains. Uh, duplicate meta descriptions are when uh, you have, um, you have your meta title and meta description when you have the exact same meta description on every single page. I see this as a pretty common thing on uh, service landing pages. So if you have service landing pages for say multiple cities, but it's talking about the same service, uh, you might think, well, I could just duplicate my meta description about that service and be okay. But that's not okay. In fact, even though Google doesn't use the meta description for ranking, they will devalue your rankings if you have duplicate meta descriptions. So you want to make sure that you don't duplicate meta descriptions. Orphan content, let's just say you created a blog. It's great, it's brand new, you put a lot of work into it, uh, you have beautiful keyword research, you got beautiful scannability, everything's awesome on that. You forgot to link it up from another page on your website. So Google can't find it. Um, that's bad. <laughs> And so basically uh, that piece of content's going to be out there like a fancy sign in the desert. It's never going to be seen by Google. And you need to make sure and link up your orphan content from content that is seeable by Google. For instance, your homepage, obviously seeable by Google. In fact, content that you link up from the homepage is going to get crawled really quick by Google. So if you have new content on your website, often you'll see a, the blog roll at the bottom of the homepage on a lot of websites where Google can easily crawl the most recent blog. So um, that's important. Also, intersite linking between your blogs is very important so you don't orphan your content as well. So really quick on that, when you, uh, you're talking about linking to your blog from other pages on your website, looking at different articles on your blog. So if I create a, we even have like an old blog post that we have not linked to anywhere else on our site, is that, would that be, uh, categorize as, uh, as kind of orphan content yeah uh, so if you if even if you get um, a link from that home page on a blog say recent blog post the five most recent once that falls off the home page because maybe you're continuing to blog uh, Google can't see that old blog anymore so often it'll stop crawling that blog 
you need to make sure your blogs link to each other. So recent blogs are um, referencing older blogs and older blogs uh, referencing new blogs and so on and so forth. Um, so that way your content's not orphaned and Google can continue to crawl it. Cool, good to know. Yeah. yeah. So those are just some of the common problems that I see with technical. Um, let's go ahead and move on to relevancy. All right, relevancy, is my content relevant to searchers? And you'll hear a lot about improper keyword research. I'm gonna say that a lot. Improper keyword research plagues most websites. Really not taking the time to understand how searchers search based upon um, using a keyword tool like Google's Keyword Planner. Uh, you can use um, a very common tool, SEMrush, or SEMrush as some people call it. Um, that's a very good keyword planning tool. That one's a paid tool though. Um, Google Keyword Planner tool is the most common. It's used for paid search, but you can use it for SEO as well because it gives you an idea about how people search. Um, also, you want to look at competitor websites. How do they uh, how do they stack their websites? How do they what kind of keywords are they putting into their uh, content? What type of content are they putting on their blogs and on their service pages? So you're going to do competitor research, and then you're going to do key, keyword research with a tool like the Google Keyword Planner tool or um, or SEMrush, which I would highly recommend. SEMrush it is a very good keyword planner tool. Okay. Okay. If you if you do improper keyword research, you don't have a content plan. And this is you know going back to what I was talking about originally. Um, IT companies that don't have time to have a real content plan, um, they're they're not going to do keyword research. Uh, so that means um, if they're not, it's it's a huge reason why they're not ranking because they haven't really put a system and strategy in place. So got to do that for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. And each our website. So far, yeah. sorry for my slow responses. I'm just like, oh man, this is a lot of information to take in. Yeah. Um, so really, uh, a lot of these other ones are just symptoms of the improper keyword research and not understanding that. So there's no real content plan. You're not going to have a prop proper silo structure, which basically a silo structure is making it clear to Google which page is the most important page on your site and which pages are the supporting pages on your site, and then organizing those pages within themes. So if Google is a library, well, we wanna make it really easy for them to understand how to organize our website in that library. If we don't, then they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're not gonna know how to organize our site, they're not gonna give us any reward for ranking, and um, it's not gonna help, it's not gonna help our overall relevancy signal. So really important to make it clear to Google. So organize your website like a library and Google's gonna index your site um, quickly and easily and they're gonna know what your website is about. So that's what siloing is about. Improper support blogs has to do with not understanding your content plan. Uh, you've got your main, main pages, usually that's your homepage and your service pages, um, and then your area service pages but you don't have proper blogs supporting those pages. Um, there's, a, there's a miss, uh, well, there's a bad excuse I've heard often from people who really don't understand SEO and aren't educated in SEO, and that is that blogs are not really that important for your website because they go after keywords that people are not converting on. Uh, we call that a high up in the funnel keywords. So if you think about the buyer's journey, high up in the funnel are keywords that are more about education. Um, where bottom of the funnel keywords are more about buying your service, okay? Well, the thing is Google loves educators online because that pleases the searchers who are trying to find answers to questions. Um, blogs are supposed to be what does that, so they become your support content to the relevancy of your website. So while you're not receiving a direct conversion from a blog, you're receiving indirect conversions from blogs because they support your main home page and service pages to rank even better, which then makes those convert more often. So improper supporting blogs is a huge deal to your website. One quick thing, Keith, when you say, I've heard you say blog and blogs interchangeably, and I've used the, the term blog post. Uh, yeah. It yeah, sounds like you are using the term blog and in the original 
uh, instance of web log as in like a singular, singular. So like a, a blog is like a post. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, um, just to clarify the context there. So I'm actually talking about specific blog posts on this improper supporting blogs. So when I use that singular, I'm using that more plural, like multiple blog posts, um, together. So you want a lot of blog posts that are supporting, your um your home page and service page structure okay gotcha i'm just curious about the semantics there great feel oh, that's great my apologies for interrupting no in fact uh please please do you know because i i might i might speak in geek and i, I don't even know so uh, <laughs> feel free to clarify um of course we've already talked about duplicate content uh duplicate content is very bad um if you have duplicate content content on your website that's only meant really for your email campaign uh, you want to go ahead and just throw a no index on those um, duplicate blogs don't tr don't tell Google to index those blogs because um, they'll look at that and they'll look at all of the other duplicate content out there and they'll just devalue your website and devalue your main service pages for ranking so um, duplicate content is not good I um, mean, the biggest example I see are the duplicate blogs on IT company sites that are just syndicated everywhere. Okay, so cannibalization of content. So um, this is a big problem. Um, maybe you said, okay, I'm not going to do duplicate content anymore. I'm just going to write blog posts. But you don't really have a strategy. You haven't really thought about your keyword research. Uh, the rule of thumb is um, one blog for one idea. Don't write multiple blogs on the same idea. If you write multiple blogs on the same idea, Google's not going to know which one they should rank. And so what you should do if you have more ideas for a, um, a theme on a blog or a title on a blog that's very similar, just add more content to that blog and then update the date that it was posted and resend it out. Or if you want to optimize the URL on that further, um, just change the URL and do a 301 redirect on that URL. But don't just create a whole new blog uh, because you have a new story idea and now you have two blogs basically about the exact same thing. That, uh, that cannibalizes the keyword theme and Google, Google will try to rank both of them so it splits up your SEO power between two posts. And then uh, Google will be confused about which one to rank. So often what happens when you uh, get rid of cannibalization of content on your website and you just combine all those duplicate theme blocks, um, you'll see a big ranking boost because Google will say, oh, okay, well, that's great. I can focus all the SEO power on that one block and then we'll rank that. So uh, make sure and don't cannibalize the content themes on your website. So Keith, that's really relevant to something. I'm working on an article right now uh, about social media and, and yeah. our, kind of the dilemmas we've gone through about how much should we use it? What should we use it at all? And, and I was thinking because it's getting so long, I'm doing a lot of research for it that uh, maybe making two or three posts would be good, like a part one, part two. But it sounds like you're advocating for simply just making it a long article. Yeah, uh, you have to think about it again. Improper keyword research takes into account your target market. Um, I always tell people uh, to you know, context is king. All right, and context is, is Google and how what Google is ranking. So uh, whatever you're trying to write on social media, whatever the title is, um, take the main keyword in that title that you're going after and go look at Google. Go look at the top ten results. What are those articles in the top 10 results? Uh, you're gonna have a mix of authority websites and you're gonna have uh, niche specific websites. Authority websites are websites that just rank for everything, right? It doesn't matter what they write on, they just rank for everything. You're not really wanting to stack your website up against that because uh, most people who are listening on here do not own authority websites. They own niche websites uh, going after a niche area or uh, a niche theme. Um, and they're, they're not seen as authority yet. Um, an authority, a niche website is usually about a hundred pages. Okay. And an authority website is about a thousand pages, just something to hang on to with what that means. Um, <clears throat> now, and that's a thousand pages of high quality, unique content. That's not a thousand pages of duplicate content. 
So, um, okay, now you've gone to Google, you've taken a look at the top 10 results. Look at the sites that are more of that 100 pages and um, the niche sites and see what kind of content they have on there to rank. Probably what you'll find if it's a, it's a, if it's a pretty competitive keyword is really lengthy articles. Um, the other thing you'll find in there is ease of scannability because 70% of people just scan content. They don't read it. They just scan it. So ease of scannability is huge. Um, you'll also notice that they do a really good job of reverse engineering the typical keywords that people search around the topic of social media. And they'll have good H2s and H3s in their content uh, that talk about um, those sub keyword themes. And then they'll have uh, um, paragraphs right after that content. Uh, so there's, there's some things that you should just take a look at with those top niche uh, results. And then um, that will tell you, uh, those things will tell you exactly how you should write that piece of content. Does that help out a little bit? Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it was, awesome. yeah, it's becoming a much la larger article the more I think about it. So it, to have some sort of, it sounds like if you're going to post something that you want to be beneficial and unique mm -hmm. to your website and it's going to be informative and, and researched, yeah. that you need to do some research and strategize on your own if you want people, uh, if you want it to be picked up by, by search engines and uh, be, you know, highly ranked within their algorithms. That's right. Yeah. And what you're, what you're getting into, and you guys can research this, uh, is the skyscraper technique. Uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Just search it in Google skyscraper tactic for content. And, uh, that'll, that'll really help you along the way on how to do proper research for your content to be able to steal relevancy from competitors. Skyscraper technique. Got it. All right, and then so another one is wrong internal link structure. Um, so what that has to do with is uh, your links in the organization on your website, going back to the library idea, siloing and library. Um, if you have your library of content, say you have one theme on your, on your website having to do with, um, maybe it's just IT services, and support and such. So you have IT, but then you have something related more to server management. Um, you could have some cannibalization between those themes if your anchor text um, is uh, just randomly placed between those two articles. And so you wanna make sure that your anchor text supports your content about server support, like like it would for the keyword theme of IT support, because those are a little bit different. And obviously there's a lot of different things you can do underneath IT support. Server support's a lot more specific, so it can be treated as its own theme. So you just wanna make sure that that's clear to Google, because then they'll understand that they should rank one page for server support and one page for IT support. Uh, what you don't want is you don't want the keyword anchor text IT support going to server support. That was, that's not gonna work. Um, so uh, you don't want server support going to IT support. That just would confuse Google. So that's bad anchor text um, link structuring. Um, there's also bad anchor text variation. If you just put IT support on every single page of your website towards uh, your IT support page, um, Google's gonna look at that and say, you know, um, you're not really doing that naturally. Uh, it looks like you're trying to game the system and rank for IT support, which, of course, we're all trying to game the system, you know, uh, and rank for it. But you need to have anchor text variation, meaning you need to have your money anchor text, is what we call it, your money keyword, uh, IT support, um, varied uh, about, it's about 50% of the time is going to be money um, and money variants. And then the rest of them are going to be keywords like, uh, company or just um, check this out or here, click here, you know, things like that. So you get anchor text variation. Um, so it doesn't look like you're just trying to game the system. Another really cool um, way of thinking about anchor text variation is on your most powerful pages, go ahead and use your money anchor keyword. Um, and then on your supporting pages, like supporting blogs and stuff, vary your anchor text a little bit because those aren't as powerful of pages. They don't have as much links going to them. 
um, you can use kind of more of those variants in there, like click here or um, IT support company instead of just IT support. Um, so, or learn more about our IT company, you know, something like that. So um, I'm kind of going into a little bit of weeds here, by the way, guys. So if, if you're getting lost, good reason, there's a lot of context to this stuff and I should be staying up a little bit higher level. So I'll get out of the weeds and just move on to the next one. Unless well, I think, I think really the, the reason you're seeing me be so quiet is Jeff does all this stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do nothing. And, and, and any question I'm thinking of is like stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think, um, you know, I have a, I have a fifth grader graduating in, in a few minutes, actually. Nice. I think I'm going to opt out, Jeff, and let you finish because you're asking all the questions and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, if I ask that, it's probably going to be dumb. <laughs> I'm trying to make stuff up. I have nothing to add. Don't worry, Dad. I'll take care of it. This all right. I think it's super right. interesting, Keith. Don't get me wrong, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's like you're flying at the college level and I'm in first grade and I'm trying to ask you questions about what you're talking about. And it's, uh, I think the audience is going to love it. I think Jeff's your guy. Nice. Um, Sounds good. So I'm going to head over and try to get a good seat for the graduation before I. Awesome. Sounds great. <laughs> but, but I'm sorry. This is really good. I'm going to listen. To, I'm sure Jeff's going to come back with all kinds of stuff we should do. Yeah. I got you covered, Dad. Give Isaiah a high five for me. Okay. I will. Thanks. Thank you, Keith, for being on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you later, dude. Okay, man. All right, so so the second one is relevancy. Is my content relevant to searchers? And and yeah, Keith, you did you did go into the weeds there, but I think if people listen closely, they'll understand what you're saying. I was I was picking up what you were putting down. It's, it's and it's clear if they don't understand what you're saying that they should go to fanit.com and talk to you guys and and uh, and and ask for some help. Yeah, uh, just, <laughs> just to just to just help you guys. Relevancy is the most important signal. Okay. So you can have technical errors on your website and and be okay uh, if you have really good relevancy on your website. So always err on the side of relevancy when you're doing SEO. If you, if you don't have a lot of time to focus on SEO, don't just focus on technical or don't just focus on building backlinks and authority or just popularity. Um, focus on relevancy because you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna hit a lot more signals that Google loves if you do a really good job at this one, okay? Gotcha. All right, so authority is, uh, do my backlinks support relevancy? If you've done proper relevancy research, uh, then you should have a really solid link building strategy. Some of the problems that I see are really no link building strategy and people going over to Fiverr because they heard links were, was an important thing and just buying a bunch of links um, and using improper anchor text and just getting backlinks from really cruddy websites that either one, don't do anything for your website, or two, they actually hurt your website. Uh, that has to do with the Penguin update um, in 2013 that Google came out with. Um, we're seeing a lot different results from cruddy backlinks these days. In fact, there's a really neat tool that Google allows us to use called the Disavow tool. So if you do have really cruddy backlinks, you can do a cleanup using the disavow tool by Google, and um, that that will usually really that will usually help quite a bit. And what the disavow tool does really simply is it just takes a do follow backlink from a cruddy website and it turns it into a no follow backlink, which is basically just fancy speak for saying Google doesn't penalize you for that link anymore um, or devalue you for that link anymore. So the disavow tool is a really cool tool, but don't go to Fiverr and just buy cheap backlinks. What is, what is that? What does Fiverr do? What is, for anybody who's unfamiliar with it. Fiverr is one of the largest uh, places you can go to online to hire um, people to do little gigs for you for internet marketing or, or tons of different stuff. Actually, it's a great place. It's a great platform to find people who can do stuff for you pretty inexpensively. I used them for my uh, podcast. Um, had, um, I did my intro through a guy on Fiverr. Very helpful, but don't buy links on Fiverr. All right, it's not gonna work out for you. So gotcha. um, you, have to, you have to win links in different ways than uh, going cheap routes like Fiverr. Um, over optimization of anchor text is the same exact thing with offsite links as it is 
on site. You don't want to over optimize or throw anchor text. If you are building backlinks, you don't want to throw the wrong anchor text towards the wrong page. Again, going back to that uh, server support versus IT. If you've got anchor text from off, off site uh, saying uh, server support, but it's linked over to your IT support page, that's just going to confuse Google. And it's much harder to get a backlink changed, an anchor text change. Um, on a backlink from another website because uh, you don't have control of that site. That's a whole different webmaster. So um, that's just a lot more difficult process. So you got to be really careful with that. Um, and then, uh, you know, definitely, uh, definitely see a problem with, um, you know, just not enough inner page links going back and forth. So um, anyway, lots of, lots of common problems that we see with, you um, with the authority side. So authority has to do with the offsite links. So just a few things to keep in mind. So with, with authority, the basic gist of it is, uh, is, is, is my relevant content proving to be valuable enough to where it's, it's producing, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for references from other yeah. sites. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's correct. And you know, one of the signals, I just mentioned interpage links at the end. One of the signals Google looks at is, if you build a lot of backlinks to your homepage, which is pretty common, oh, just build more links to my homepage or build more links to my service page, and you don't have a lot of links also going to your blog, um, Google's gonna look at that and say, you know, that's not really that natural. You should be winning links on your blog posts that are really educational. In fact, those should win a lot of your backlinks. Um, your homepage is going to win more than any other page, of course, but um, you should be doing some deep linking to your inner pages. So from other websites. From other websites. Okay. Good. Yeah. Gotcha. And okay, popularity. So this is the last signal. Um, does my content really help the searchers find what they're looking for? Um, some of the common issues are improper keyword research again, because uh, let's just say you're using even the wrong synonym of a keyword that's not search as much as in your title tag, which is um, the phrase people see in search engine results when they search for whatever they're searching for, um, then people aren't going to click on you as much. So if you've done improper keyword research, you're not going to be as relevant. And so you're not going to rank as highly. Um, so that's, that's not going to be good. Also driver words missing in your title tag. Um, a driver word would be something like, um, best top rated, uh, something along. I'm just using best. Don't go and change all your title takes to best. <laughs> I'm just talking about words that create emotion. All right. So, um, I've even used the word explained and that's actually helped out quite a bit. Um, there's, there's lots of different words you could use it. And in general, your, your title should invoke emotion. Um, and, uh, it should make people want to take action and, the biggest signal, the popularity signal is basically um, asking the question as well at, is, um, is your website leading well? Are you being a good leader? So if you've done the proper keyword research and really understand the target market and the keywords they're searching, then you will be able to effectively lead them from the title tag they click on, the driver words that are in the title, to the meta description that you fill out, to the page being easily scannable, uh, by putting correct titles within there that people would also search around that topic and um, Also by giving the users what they're looking for quickly um, a good example of giving users what they're looking for quickly would be um, a page that's maybe doing a review on um, top top five things you should consider with whatever um, it could be uh, maybe you know, top things to consider with an IT service company, right? Well, before you talk about the five things, you bury that um, at the bottom of the article and at the top of the article, you just kind of talk about a bunch of general stuff. Well, um, people are gonna click on your title tag, if let's just say it was really compelling, get on your uh, website, and then they're gonna see way too much intro paragraph, and they're not gonna find what they're looking for quickly. And so, most people scan, 70% scan. So you really should bring that five, those five things up higher um, and maybe bury some of that general content at the very end if they want to continue to read to learn more. Um, that way you're going to get people 
pulled into those five things a lot quicker. Um, another way to think about popularity and uh, getting people to take more action, it's really good on, on, in Google's eyes if people are clicking through your website. And so bring in your calls to actions. Uh, maybe that's an image on your website. It's a call to action to an ebook or something of that nature um, is, uh, is brought up higher towards the top. If people are clicking on that, landing on the page, clicking on that, going to a landing page, filling out their information and downloading it, um, that is a really solid signal to Google as well. Very good popularity signal. So just some common issues, a few ways to fix that. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And then, um, you know, just uh, how to align your website to these four signals. Here's some steps you can take. Um, audit your website for some technical errors. You know, I talked about just a few technical errors in there, but there's a lot more technical errors. Uh, make sure it's fast. You know, that's the most important thing. You could have errors on your website, but um, if it's fast, if it's loading under two seconds using the pingdom test or um, a, a Git metrics test, um, then, you know, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Uh, do the proper keyword research on your website. That is huge. If you don't do proper keyword research, then you're going to mess up everything else. Uh, so you got to build a content plan after that. Um, we call it the content index. It's actually a, um, a sheet uh, or a, um, we, use, we use Google Docs, so we call them sheets. Um, it's actually a sheet that we put together that lays out your first um, important page, which is usually your home page, and then your first cluster, which is usually your service pages. And then it also does research to figure out what are the best supporting blogs for the keyword theme you're trying to rank for. And then we actually put together like 20 to 30 different titles that we found from our research that we should write on over the next few months or year, you know, depending upon how much you can write. Um, the next thing, which we did not talk about at all today, but I got to mention it because it's just really important, is optimizing what we call your three kings. Your URL, your title, and your H1. If you've done the proper keyword research, then you should um, make sure and have those keywords in the URL, title, and H1 of the pages that you are trying to rank. If you've got those in there, then uh, you're going to give your pages a lot higher chance of ranking. Um, uh, even if you had great content, if, you're, if your three kings are not good, uh, and I mean paragraph content, if you have good paragraph content, it doesn't really uh, help you out if your three kings are not correct. And just by optimizing your three kings, you can make content that's well-written rank a lot better. Um, optimize your content for scannability. I've already mentioned that. 70% of people just scan. So you've got to make sure your content's scannable. Um, and then silo intersite links with proper anchor text ratio. I'll talk about that as well. Don't want to cannibalize. Um, your pages with improper uh, links um, internally. And uh, so those are just some easy things that you can do uh, to your website to make sure that you're aligning to four signals. This is great. Yeah. Wow, man. I mean, there's so much information. Yeah, I know it's a lot of information. You know, um, if, if you don't understand it, this is why uh, people hire SEOs. Uh, it is a lot of information. Um, so whether that's just consulting alongside of the company or hiring them um, for just ongoing work, because um, even if you're trying to steal a relevancy for blogs, I mean, if you're an IT company and you're trying to do IT services, the last thing on your mind is how do I do keyword research to steal relevancy for my competitors to rank higher for my local area? I, in that way, I mean, I, to simplify it, the, the question in your mind is how do I rank higher? How do I get more, um, more people to my website that will convert into leads, of course. But you, it's not just that question that has to be answered. There's a lot more stuff behind that that has to be figured out and considered with the proper strategy in place to be able to make your website start generating leads. So, um, a lot, of, a lot of really cool stuff. However, some really good uh, practical applications here. Um, you know, if I was to distill it down to just a couple things, uh, get the duplicate content off your website and make sure your three kings are optimized. You know, those would be two really good things that you could do for your website today that would make a, make a good difference. So a really big difference. Awesome. 
Well, well, thanks, Keith. I really appreciate you coming on today. We we really appreciate you coming on today and, yeah. and sharing all this information with me. I imagine, forgive me, I imagine this is the last slide of, of, of everything, right? Yeah, it is. And of course, you know, I do have my mug on the last slide, I guess, but, you know, it's for some reason it, it's just stopped. You know, you can see my mug here, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No, we can we can see it, and uh, and thanks so much for sharing all this all this info. I'm sure it's going to be very relevant to our listeners, and we appreciate it. How can people get in touch with you guys? Yeah, if you just want to call us, search Fanit. You know, um, if you search Fanit online, you'll see our reviews. We got some very solid reviews um, on there. Uh, you know, we uh, we've done lots of consulting for IT companies. We've done lots of work for IT companies. Um, our company uh, Fanit is a managed service provider of marketing. And so, um, you know, marketing ourselves well, um, has taught us a lot about helping other managed service companies rank well and do well with, um, SEO or marketing strategy, HubSpot management, whatever they need to do there. So, um, give us a call from that number and uh, talk to Tony, talk to me, uh, we'd love to we'd love to talk about the strategy for your website. If you have any questions, just you know, needing a technical audit, needing some cleanup, you know, we'd love to help you out and, and you know, put you in the right direction. Um, you know, we work with companies who've got internal writers, um, and uh, they use us to kind of help drive the strategy. So uh, that's that's also another way to utilize Fanit to help out. That way, you get. Um, yet the guys who are full time thinking about all this technical stuff, but, uh, they help, you know, provide a little bit of leadership to the internal team. So, um, yeah. Great. Fanit.com. F-A-N-N-I-T.com. And Keith, thanks for joining us. You're the man. Absolutely. Absolutely.